Observe as you walk. Be aware that history surrounds you. Keep your eyes and mind open to explore the secrets held by the land. Rows upon rows of Richardson, Richardson, and Richardson gravestones line the cemetery of Piney Hill Baptist Church in Amherst County, Virginia. While unassuming at first, these quiet rural hills and pastures are home to many of the living descendants of freed slaves, all from a formerly thriving community right off of what is now the Appalachian Trail along the Brown Mountain Creek. A community of several households along Brown Mountain Creek, which is now presently the uh, a stretch of the Appalachian Trail. Um, it was a recently freed enslaved folks from a plantation. Off the banks of what is now the Lynchburg Reservoir in Amherst County lived a white man named Jesse Richeson. Jesse owned about 40 slaves, one of whom he fathered, named Mose. In 1868, following emancipation, Mose Richeson acquired 220 acres along Brown Mountain Creek. He was able to earn income from both his father and owner. And he gradually increased his land holdings to a couple hundred acres, and as such was able to, in fact, rent out some of that land uh, to some of his neighbors and the uh, formerly enslaved people, including the Hughes family. Eli Hughes was one of the, the first renters. There was a story about Jess Richards. I reckon that one of these slaves did something that he didn't like, and he almost beat him to death. He got on his horse and went on down Brown Mountain Creek and went by a rock, and something jumped off that rock and grabbed him around the waist. And they tell me the horse started running and went on down and crossed the road and went on home. The next morning, they said that he was dead, and the horse was too. Now that's what they told. They called a rock after that, Scare Rock. Moses Richardson had two children, James and Joseph Richardson, both of whom acquired hundreds of acres from their father. James and Joseph ran a local mill, farmed tobacco and wheat, and established this community of newly freed slaves that remains in Amherst County to this day. Records were not collected for enslaved and newly freed people. Oral history serves as a way to pass a family's history from generation to generation. Today, stories of the Brown Mountain Creek community are still remembered by their descendants. I live right here. I mean, this is my home. I love it here, man. That's why I'm still here. I mean, my sister live there, my brother live there. I got two sisters live there, but right here is my spot. Remnants of the Brown Mountain Creek community are scattered throughout the forest, revealing a rich history and even complex engineering feats. So there, there are miles of these walls here in this, in this community, and they're not built because they were pretty, which they are, or, but they were built to get the rocks out of the ground so that um, it would be more arable for crops, be more dirt. And so they took the rocks and they had to do something with them. So the, the least impact or the least uh, footprint that the rocks would have would be to put them in a wall. They would be vertical, leave that much more ground to till for harvest. And it's a tremendous amount of labor, tremendous. Taft Hughes was the last person alive to have lived along Brown Mountain Creek. He was interviewed by former Peddler District Ranger David Benovich in 1992. He lived adjacent to the trail 
and his stories illuminate the history of this once forgotten community. I asked him if he knew anything about the, the old home places and stone walls and so forth down on Brown Mountain Creek. And he told me that he was born there. And that intrigued me, and that's how I got talking to him about that black community down there. And over time, it was broken down, but it was a slaveholding property. And the main landowner in there was a guy named Jesse Richardson. And the slaves that he owned did all the terracing and the rock wall building. The shared experience of former enslavement brought this community together. Slavery's legacy still resides with the community's descendants today. One of the first stories that I heard of him living around the Peddler Mills and the Brown Mountain was when the auction was held to see him listed as six years old being sold for $400 was quite striking. I remember when I first got into historical archaeology, it was commonly um, you know, a platitude amongst historical archaeologists that they wanted to give voice to the voice list. I had a colleague in grad school who said, we don't need you to give us voice. We need you to pass the microphone. So hearing the actual voices of people who lived in these places like Taft Hughes um, is a, a really, really important component to good archaeology and history on places like this. Something we got from the family, uh, 16 brothers and sisters. Family is kind of an important thing in our family unit. We have some interesting things that goes on there with family and connection and all. But Daniel had mentioned his um, his brothers and sisters, not all of them, but I'd actually been able to identify even after slavery and after they were sold in 1854, the family was actually split up. Daniel was sold away from his mother and father. Well, there were 10 of us in the family, my mother and dad and eight children. My oldest brother was named Lawrence. Then there was Fletcher, then William, Russell, Harry, Henry, and myself. I had two sisters. One died and was buried on Brown Mountain Creek. My other sister still living. She is in Philadelphia now, Ruth. She is 86 years old. Today, just a few miles away from the Appalachian Trail is a living testament to the continual bonds established at the Brown Mountain Creek community. Piney Hill Baptist Church was established in 1858 by Moses Richardson's son, Joseph, along the Brown Mountain Creek. The church moved to its current site in 1929 and now serves numerous descendants of the people who lived on the creek. I joined there when I was 12 years old. And um, yes, all my friends and friends and family, most of the family are there. Yet the decision to move was not their choice. It was an idea of a couple of people to have a trail that would run up and down the eastern United States in the mountain range. And, and it grew from that. These people were movers and shakers, I guess you would say. And, but later on, as things became more sophisticated, an act of Congress called the National Scenic Trails Act it established the Appalachian Trail as the first national scenic trail. And it gave the Appalachian Trail, this act did, the power of public domain which means that it could literally take your property for a fair price. Following their displacement, they moved to nearby cities like Buena Vista or Lynchburg, or up north to DC, Baltimore, or Philadelphia. Yet those who remained in Amherst County worshiped at the same church where their parents worshiped. And now their children continue the tradition. While the congregation here and much of the current generation are hesitant to discuss their storied past, the community is still strong and the long lineage continues. Mother used to, granddaddy, our um, grandparents, aunts, uncles, aunts, all of them later down. If you happen to cross this section of the Appalachian Trail, take it in. Listen to the sounds and enjoy the rich history of the Brown Mountain Creek community.